sound. Our ears can easily pick up the sound of a family member's footsteps coming up the stairs. Your neighbor's passionate yet off to midnight karaoke, or the unfortunate telltale part you try to keep silent, all the while traveling in sound waves. This is a known fact now, but did you know the discovery of this sound waves actually made a huge impact on our world as we know it? Hello folks, I'm Micah. I'm Jane. And welcome back to your favorite YouTube series, Fibonacci! Today, we'll be exploring the fifth chapter of the incredibly insightful book, Nature's Mind. And we'll find out how studying an instrument snowballs into the creation of the moving visual images that you see on your screen right now. talk math. There has always been this great debate about which is better, applied or theoretical mathematics. I choose neither. Sure. <laughs> Same. But most of us would too. But to the mathematicians of the old, one had to be better than the other. Well, this chapter presented an alternative argument. Both are connected and actually work well together. Quoting page 62 of the book, it is a story in which pure and applied aspects of mathematics combined to yield something far more powerful and compelling than either could have produced alone. So, let's get right into it! Say, differential equations you wouldn't normally think violin strings, but that's where we differ from the ancient Greeks. Aside from, well, our culture and our customs and literally everything else. We have better hair than them too. Anyways, strings vibrate much too fast for the naked eye to see any one instantaneous shape. But the Greeks found one important evidence for the idea that a string can vibrate at many different frequencies. After much experimentation and attention held by a string and how finger placements changes its speech and whatnot, Brooke Taylor published a book about the violin and its sinusoidal sending waves. But John Deron Dallenbrook said, in fact, that the shape of the wave can be anything you like. From there, Leonard Euler figured out the wave equation for a string, a differential equation that governs the rate of change of the shape of the string and expresses in mathematical language the idea that the acceleration of each tiny segment of the string is proportional to the tensile forces acting upon that segment. So it is a consequence of Newton's law of motion. But because mathematicians love arguing, a man named Bernoulli picked a fight with Euler, claiming that he too had solved the wave equation but with a different method. This spiraled into a century-long controversy, but eventually ended with both parties being claimed as correct. Although, as Daniel Bernoulli had maintained all along, all new curves given by Zalembers and Euler are only combinations of the Taylor vibrations. So, technically, Bernoulli was a little more right. <laughs> So now the vibrations of a violin string were no longer a mystery and the bored ancient Greeks with their terrible hair decided to move on to bigger and better things. Drums! Nani? Drum. <laughs> Drums, right. It was an even bigger challenge because a violin string was one-dimensional, but a drum's vibrations travels through a close space into the second dimension. So, Euler did his thing again and derived a wave equation for the sound waves in a drum, and mathematicians grew in their understanding of the wave equation and its uses. And everything spiraled from there. Not in a bad way though, it happened in the best way possible. 
The wave equation began to move out of the realm of music into mathematical physics in general. The book describes it as probably the single most important mathematical formula ever devised, Einstein's famous relation between mass and energy notwithstanding. People began seeing this equation used in water waves and vibrations in the air. But perhaps the biggest game changer was when it was utilized in electricity and magnetism. All right, let's introduce you to this cool dude called Michael Vesa. Char, Michael Faraday. He was an English physicist and chemist. But more importantly, he had the best job ever being a mad scientist. Faraday had to come up with new, exciting experiments every week for his job, and all this tinkering and brainstorming led him to find a link between the very different concepts of electricity and magnetism. Very creatively, he called it electromagnetism. This discovery blew the minds of people at the time. From here, smart people created the ele electric marker, and the electrical generator. All amazing things that led to the flux of capitalism and exploiting human labor. Okay, getting off topic there. But since he wasn't a mathematician, Faraday could only express his ideas in physical imagery. Luckily, his successor James Clark Maxwell was. Maxwell expressed Faraday's ideas about lines of force in terms of mathematical equations for magnetic and electrical fields. That is, distributions of magnetic and electrical charge throughout space. By 1864, he had refined his theory down to a system of four different differential equations that related changes in the magnetic field to changes in the electrical field. And as one idea leads to another, this became the basis for Heinrich Hertz to generate electromagnetic waves, and Guglielmo Marconi to carry out the first wireless telegraphy. And the rest, they say, is history. So, a quick recap for all this mumbo jumbo so you kiddos wouldn't be so confused. We learned about the different mathematics, applied and theoretical. The former being used practically in the real world, while the latter in specialized equations, and how they best work together. Then, we tackled the violin string, which vibrates rapidly while creating different frequencies. Brooke Taylor claiming that it produces sinusoidal standing waves. Laurent Delambert remarking that the waves can actually be in any shape. From this, we got the wave equation, in which Leonard Euler analyzed that the string is a differential equation that governs the rate of, of change of the string shape. This led to a long argument between Euler and Bernoulli, wherein they both came out on top, but with Bernoulli like 1% higher. Moving on, the drums proved a more difficult challenge than the violin since it travels through a closed space into the second dimension unlike the one-dimensional violin. The true potential of the wave equation later revealed itself in different fields, but proved especially revolutionary in mathematical physics. Eventually, Faraday discovered the concept of electromagnetism through the same principles as the wave equations. And finally, this iconic equation carried its way to our modern day technologies. All the fancy stuff that we use every day like our phones, TV, and even vehicles. It's amazing what simple equations can actually do in the real world. So Jane, what can you say you've learned from this? We know what happened, but like my parents always used to ask whenever I talk to them about something I'm passionate about, why should we care? Well, Micah, this chapter gave us an idea of technological development over the centuries and how it all came from the seemingly mundane field of mathematics. Who would have thought a violin would be the reason we have our phones? The amazing breakthrough that is the wave equation brought together both applied and theoretical math. Plus, we must appreciate the contribu contributions of those who dedicated their lives turning art into the advancement of technology. Yeah, our generation is fortunate to have all this information at our fingertips. We have Google and Reddit. While the ancient math people struggled to find answers, having to be resourceful and make use of what they had. That actually begs the question, what if 
we spend more time thinking and innovating like them as well. Not by literally inspecting a violin string, but visualizing possibilities that we can create for future generations to come. Is this you saying you'll finally start to take your acronym seriously? All right, let's cut the video short here. <gasps> Thank you for watching everyone and stay safe and sanitized. Bye! <laughs>